Welcome back. Good morning, Warriors. Back with another uh, episode on Vigor Warriors 2. Uh, once again, I want to thank all the subscribers, especially a lot of my friends from India who are asking a lot of good questions. Uh, please continue with those questions. I'm happy to help you any way I can. Uh, subscribe, like, comment. We're getting a lot of good feedback. Uh, and the purpose of this is really to basically try to help people. I'm trying to kind of talk about my experiences, plus all the things that I've talked to with people and over the years in classes that I've taught and different things about how to be a better person. This all comes back down to one thing that I think is for men and women together that can succeed, and that's self-control. And that's the ability to be able to control your behaviors and not let others control and dictate your behavior around you. And that's a key. So I'm going to do a couple of different videos today. The first one we're going to do is going to talk about uh, addictions. And I had a great comment uh, from one of my friends from India who asked me, um, a young man who was, I think, 19 years old, trying to start this whole thing and looking at, um, you know, hard mode and how can you tell addictions and those type of things. So let me kind of talk about that a little bit. Obviously, I've been uh, married many, many years, uh, and you know, being six years old, I've had a lot of experiences dealing with situations and addictions, and and we can talk about lots of types of addictions, uh, not only the uh, you know the the uh, pornography and and all that kind of stuff. We can talk about addictions of gambling and drug abuse and things like that. And I think I will do one on that one, how it affects your your relationships and how it affects people. But when it comes to addictions that we're talking about here <clears throat> and losing your energy, this is something that is really important to kind of focus on. So let's look at the issue of addictions. If we look at the issues of addictions, really what you're doing is you're basically being obsessed by something. In this tape, if you're being obsessed by images and you're losing your energy and those type of things because you're you're watching you know uh, you know images on TV and pictures on TV, then you're basically going to be at the point where you're becoming obsessed with this, and this is something taking over your life. Now you know we're not none of us is per are perfect. I mean, I'm far from perfect, obviously. You know, I have 60 years of a lot of this stuff. And, and uh, for me, this started way back when I was in the teenagers. And uh, once again, I got, you know, sucked in with a lot of temptation. And, and it wasn't, you know, back in the back in the 70s, you didn't have as much of it. Except, I will say this, back in the you know late 60s, early 70s, when I was growing up, you know, you had, you know, the, the revolution, sexual revolution, all kinds of stuff going on. And, um, you know, you had a lot of stuff around you that kind of, you know, you didn't see before, you know, and I didn't see that as a small child. And certainly my parents were aghast with all that stuff coming through, but that was all new stuff. And now you had all these kind of images you had to kind of deal with, but we didn't have internet. We didn't have a lot of that type of stuff, but still you had books and pictures and things like that and Playboy and those things were very important, you know, out there. And so, you know, you always try to, you know, as a young person, try to see if you can try to, you know, get your, and my uncle had, my grand, grandfather had a lot of those type of books and you, and you go to the barbershop and all those kind of stuff. And so it's all around you. And I didn't realize the addiction it, it creates in you once that happens. And so, uh, for me, it, it was, it started young and I've kind of tried to battle this, uh, for a long, long time. Now, finally, I was able to get a lot of strength out of this. And uh, by the time I was, you know, 50 some years old, I guess I'm walking through over. Sorry about that. But um, 50 years old, 50 some years old, I decided it's time to change this and try to go into another type of power. And so when I, you know, was learned about the art of celibacy, learned about the art of uh, brahmacharya and try to learn about, you know, retention and trying to figure out how can I basically get more power, I figured out. Uh, through books like the Fountain of Youth, the Think and Grow Rich, that this is the key. is not only to be able to kind of have some willpower to get, do some other stuff, which I've done over the years. It's more of a case of being strong enough to say, okay, I'm now going to go full and basically kind of get this stuff out of my life. And first of all, guys, it's a life change. It's, it's a life change. I mean, you know, you start off young and it's important to kind of, you know, learn the habits. But remember, what you're doing is making a, a change of life. And that's important. So with all the relationships and things I've had, I kind of wrote down some ideas here that we talk about. So how can addictions ruin your your relationships and ruin your life? 
So first of all, the first thing that's going to happen is that you're going to start looking at, you know, women in this case, I'm talking about men, you're looking at women as objects. And that is never good for relationships because that person is a human being. That person is something that somebody that is caring for you, that you're caring for them. And you're trying to nurture a relationship with that person by looking at that person as an, as an object. That's never going to be something that's going to help you in a relationship because you're not going to look at them any kind of emotional value. And time and time again, one of the things that uh, women you know, will complain about in relationships is the emotional connection. But if you're only sitting there watching pictures, it's, it's very difficult to sit and look at this person and take this person seriously as a person. And that's why, you know, there's a real danger in getting very obsessed with things like OnlyFans and all this other kind of stuff that's out there, uh, you know, Instagram, all these pictures, because what you're doing is you're not, you're basically not, you're not looking at this person as a person, you're looking at them as an object. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is that you desensitize yourself you know, as a, you know, in those pictures to get satisfaction out of looking at an object and once that happens the next time and the next time and the next time you're not going to be satisfied with just that object so now you're talking about something stronger and stronger and stronger to get the same type of reaction and it's totally different than when you're actually with that person a lot of a lot of people who are very obsessed and addicted they struggle in, in any kind of intercourse, any kind of relationship, because they're not, I mean, this is a, a live person, and they, they're so used to an object or a video screen or a video game or something like that, and it's not real, it's not a realistic type of thing. And so you become desensitized, and now you're wanting more and more and more type of things. And obviously, we've seen this in a lot of criminal type activities where people started off by watching this stuff, <clears throat> and then basically this is what happened later on that they basically become so desensitized that they needed more and more and more, and they went into violence and they went into a lot of other, you know, perverted type behaviors. And so you have to really be careful that this stuff doesn't take control over you. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, we're all healthy people. We're, you know, all looking for relationships and things like that. But certainly, you know, you know, working during with people is 10 times better than with the images and things you have, because that that creates the same reaction and dopamine. But it but it, but it changes your thought pattern and ideas. All right. Number two, then, is desensitizing. Number three that I had listed here is unrealistic. So here again, you are basically in an unrealistic relationship. If you're trying to go ahead, and I knew this one person who was in their 40s, and, and they tried to look at their girlfriend as someone like in one of these movies, and they tried all these type of things, and, and I'm not saying, you know, that in, you know, what you're doing with people, that's your own business, but I also will say that, you know, this person came back and was a devastated relationship, you know, just, you know, went the wrong way. Because they were trying to do everything and, and thinking of these movies and all that kind of stuff. And they were caught up with more of the movies than they were actually with the person. And once again, it becomes realistic. A lot of those people on those shows, movies, pictures, they're photoshopped. They're actors, actresses. It's not real, guys. It's not realistic. And you have to realize that. So a lot of the mistakes that I've seen over the years and I've experienced over the years myself go back to that whole type of thing. And you got to kind of be honest with yourself and realize what you're seeing in front of you is not real. Now, hopefully you can kind of discern that. And then with your with a person, you're acting totally different. But once again, if you're living, if you get into this fantasy world of addictions with this, then all of a sudden you're looking at people differently. So number three is unrealistic. Number four, it weakens you. We've talked about that so many times. You lose focus. And so in relationships, you're not going to be very strong. And you're not going to have the strength you need to be a strong person in a relationship. And like I said before, a lot of women expect you to be a strong person. And you're not strong. And you're weak. And you lose, you're not only losing the energy, but mentally, physically, you're losing focus. And, and so number four is it's going to weaken you so your relationship's not going to be as good. And you can't you know, put that kind of effort into it. You know, uh, you're not willing to make that kind of effort because all you're doing is sitting and watching, you know, the images on TV or the Internet and things like that. Number five, there's like number five, no motivation. You know, 
you have no motivation, you don't really want to, you know, put effort into the relationship, you don't want to, you know, to time, you're more willing to look at pictures and images and movies and things like that, and you're not willing to go ahead and put time into that relationship you have with the person, and obviously that person is going to recognize it. I had a good question from Shab, and I didn't, I didn't get to because I didn't see it uh, for, until now, but, you know, they, the question was, do, sen do women sense if you're on this energy? Yes, of course they do, you know, because they biologically, they're attuned to that. They look your way, they stare at you, they do a lot of things like that, even even at my age, you know, that happens. Now, once again, my case, I, it's more flattering to me than anything else, uh, because that didn't happen to me when I was younger, because I was never on this type of journey. Um, now, I'm not interested, of course, at this point, because my situation is a little different. But a lot of you young guys, you know, you're looking for, you know, quality, you know, high quality women and those type of things. Um, you know, you can you more of a big, you can pick more of a choice to do that because you're focused and you're on your purpose and goal, and the, the women are attracted to that. So you're going to have a lot of women who are going to give you attention. Now, however, they can also see, guys, the opposite of this. And in relationships, they can see if you're not holding your seat, if you're not holding your energy, and they can see the fact that you are uh, weak and weak-minded, and you're not able to be strong in your decisions, and um, you know you can't say no, you can't do all the type of things, and a lot of that goes back to not only a self-concept issue, but most of that comes back because you're losing confidence because you know you're spending more time with images and things like that. Now it takes a lot to break habits, but if you're younger, it's great. If you're older, you know, in my case, and you're trying to start this journey, uh, it's great. You know, you gotta you gotta just be able to kind of realize you had lots of years of this. Don't hurt yourself. Don't, you know, don't basically, you know, uh, you know, we're going to talk about relapse in another one of the videos. But, you know, you, you, those things are going to happen to you. But realize what is right and what's going to make you the most successful and happy. At, and that's going to be to go ahead and, and be on a journey in which you learn self-control. And the whole idea behind all this is no one's perfect, but you're learning self-control. Uh, the last one is lack of purpose. And that's what I go back to. I mean, what you're doing is developing a purpose, my friends. You're developing a purpose on self-control, to control yourself, to be able to, to be successful and focus on the things you want to focus on. Don't get tempted by society telling you this is what you should be doing and things like that. I don't, you know, there's so many cases where I don't believe a lot of what I'm seeing, um, you know, because I know what I'm experiencing. And what I'm experiencing is a lot different than what I would have been told all these years. And so that's why I try to get this stuff out so you can tell you that you don't necessarily have to lose control yourself all the time. You control yourself, and then all of a sudden now you get more control. And if you look at, once again, the this, this people who were you know, successful, Henry Ford, I, I talked about this in another one, Tesla, all these people, uh, Muhammad Ali, you know, um, Mike Tyson, they all were able to gain control themselves for a period of time. Now, if you talk with them, maybe they've, they've, you know, they relapsed and did different things. And maybe, you know, they found someone and had a you know, family and children and they procreated. And that's, and that's great. But the bottom line, really, guys, is knowing how to control yourself is the key. Don't let this control you. You control it. All right. So those are the dangers of how uh, addiction can ruin your life. And once again, subscribe, like, and comment. And uh, we'll see you at the next video. Battle on.